Uh, all right. Then we got a bunch of stuff that is off the game's topic. Have you seen the opening credits of Netflix's Cowboy Bebop? Yep. Interesting. So, still no way to tell what this is going to, how this is, how well this is going to work. But, you know, I remain cautiously optimistic. The, the, it, the trailer, rather, the intro shows you a bunch of stuff that kind of tells you what episodes you're getting. It's interesting. Many of which are episodes I did not think we were going to get. At all. So the moment the first thing you see is Pierrot, I was like, oh shit, okay, that that's what you picked, you know? Um, yeah. You see you see the clown, you see obviously Vicious and the shot from Ballad of the Fallen Angels. You've seen Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, Abdul Hakim. But ah. yes, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, correct. Right. <laughs> um, you see uh, Asimov and uh, Katarina, like the, the red-eye first episode couple. Uh, you see the animal rights terrorists and the, and, uh, the old lady. Yeah. You know. Uh, I'm confused because they said that it wasn't going to be a retread of the show. They were going to do something new so that the show could exist by itself. And it wasn't. <laughs> and that seems like an overt lie. Fuck out of here, bro. Um, they the are The reason why I'm not. confused is because they show us the intro and they show us a bunch of the classic shots. And aside from Vicious, who looks terrible. Mm -hmm. Like, embarrassingly awful. Cosplay. Looks like cosplay. I, 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 um, and I, oh, we'll talk about that in a second. It, Finish the thought. The rest of it looks like pretty good to decent in like mm -hmm. a style. Yeah. But they made the mistake of like directly copying the original intro, which means I get to look at it and go, that looks pretty good. That looks better than I thought. And then I go look at the original intro uh -huh, uh -huh, and go, uh -huh. yeah, but it Fuck doesn't off. look as good as that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So why would you do the exact same thing? So in, I it's, think it's like a it's like a perfect example of why adapting animation to live action is really hard because you're trying like the, the like the shots of them running. Yeah. Look awkward because yeah. they're constrained by the size and dimensions of of their real human bodies and real and humans don't run like that you know they can't get the dynamism yeah. that you could get in a black silhouette animated shot so you also see like the you know you see the bebop taken off and you're like oh that's a pretty big cg thing uh it's in the intro okay it's not the silhouette font yeah. you gotta get that that little like all right we'll see how it lands um but the end of it, when you see the three of them appear, and you're just like, dear God, there has never been a more gaping hole in that bottom left-hand corner. <laughs> like, I can't believe how yeah, gaping that there, hole right? is. Not at all. Not oh, at all. Then, then fuck it. You know? Like, um, the, my favorite fucking episode is default cut. Which I didn't think was going to be a big deal because I didn't think they were going to do all the, like, you know? I didn't think they were going to be doing the same fucking episodes. So when they say we're doing something different, I think that is a way of, uh, it's a way of covering your ass so that whatever isn't faithful is like, yeah, well, we said we'd do something different. Right? Yeah, we're doing something Even if, different by reusing the same characters, plots, scenes, exactly. dialogue, and, yes. and directing. So even if it's 80% similar, the 20% that has to change so that we can write Ed out slash, um, you know, just do something completely, like, like variant from, from what the original thing was, it gives that coverage. It lets you go like, oh, well, yeah, I wasn't saying this would be a frame-for-frame -frame remake like Sin City. You know, but expect a lot of it to still do that for sure. Um, I mean, it ain't it ain't Death Note, right? So far, it ain't it ain't fucking Netflix Death Note. But um, if that's what we're getting, and it's I don't did they say how many episodes it would be? No, because I'm assuming it'll be well, like at least one. I don't know. 
I'm assuming probably like 10 or so, like the Netflix 10 episode miniseries type of thing. Um, and they, they pick a bunch of those. That's just enough to kind of introduce the the vicious story and like, you know, maybe have him show up like twice. Um, he, God, he looks like fucking cosplay so much worse than the others do. Because oh, yeah, the others, no. I'm like, fine, that's fine. Like the cast shot, I'm like, yeah, no, that's fine. That's what, like, uh, looks looks like it'll be okay. You know, he looks really fucking cosplay. But I'm also going, but how do you avoid this problem with a design like that? I have a suggestion to you. Is it don't do it? Don't do it. <laughs> that's okay. that's the sol- because like like, but like vicious <sighs> is like vicious is astonishing because like the others look like cosplayers on a movie set acting out their roles yeah vicious okay. looks like a cosplayer who snuck onto that set by comparison there's i think like we can expand this problem out quite a bit further i would say which is be shonen in general in live action are really fucking tough to do to land that energy and not feel like that's just some cringy cosplayer kid is rough the hair well, doesn't fe- it doesn't lend the same energy in real life it just looks like a weirdo with this wig on with a sword spinning it around and you're like that's just here, you're a fucking cringe lord like it doesn't this, feel the, this, the this same this is important I think this is actually really important because the excellent visuals of the original Cowboy Bebop do blind you to the fact that Vicious is cringe in universe. <laughs> like the only reason the fights with 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 Spike kind of go his way is because he's using like 10 goons as like bullet shields to run is it close the voice so then with his samurai sword is it just the voice that's selling it so hard yeah you know the dude's got a oh i got a big crow that hangs out on my shoulder and i i cut people but like it's, it's he's fucking crazy because that dude. shit landed for me man i was like damn that's a rival look at that rival sword boy you know Ah, I just like, and I think about how if there ever had to be a a live action Alan Shazar, how awful that would be, how awful that would look. A live action Sephiroth, you'd just cringe and die. Like it would be the worst shit ever. It has to be that goofy animation. You, you could you could do a live action Alan or or. Um sephiroth but you'd have to go k-pop i i'd have to see it i don't know i can't i can't it just doesn't seem like it seems like it's always gonna have that cosplayer energy you know um um fucking live action vega you know claw from street fighter like it 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 just the hair is always gonna not carry the anime like suave like in the wind cool guy vibe that it does which it already kind of doesn't land anymore in anime like you said you're kind of saying it, it i i don't know how they could have done vicious i don't know what what they could have done you know i will say there is there is one thing about the 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 netflix adaptation intro thing that i saw that i actually really dug and liked was that uh all the text in the background's been changed to japanese uh instead of english Mm -hmm. because it's an American production Mm -hmm. working on a Japanese property as opposed to a Japanese production working on a ostensibly American property. Yeah, the logo has Japanese in it. it, Like, it's a a cool little thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and and I expect, you know, them to show that off, especially with the whole, with the setting and the influence of, um, uh, like, uh, using, like, uh, Chinese currency and things like that, you know? Um... I imagine the um, uh, 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 like was oh yeah that's what I was gonna say. The Witcher is an interesting example of like 
here's it's not anime but it's ba- and it's not but it's basically like a, a like a european bishonen right kind of it he's got long silver flowing hair well okay well, hold on like okay depends I, I- on what version you're looking at cuz henry cavill is going to look like that Geralt is canonically like kind of like a busted looking old man. So cuz going off of like what I see what like I'm just again having not actually gone through it looking at like the games and stuff I kind of see like you know that like uh, uh he's got the, the 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 half shave he's got the five o'clock shadow and the, and the grizzled jaw and chin and face but like he's got that elvish kind of hair right um yeah and then seeing Henry Cavill like with it the first impression i had seeing that that had him in costume was oof that wig well he's just doing fabio really right so uh then everyone said it was it worked pretty well and in the end like it it ended up being fine but i remember the first impression i i had of that wig upon seeing it on henry's head was that looks like cosplay yeah you know it does so the the show then like make that better did it surpass that initial impression it's fine looks fine it's not very accurate because it's like it's supposed to be like the fucking weird looking grizzled old man so then the performance can surpass the cosplay yeah it's possible yeah so vicious could possibly nail this no not this one. <laughs> what? No way. But I thought we just established. Vicious looks a hundred times worse than Henry Cavill as which as Geralt. Like it's not even close. Like it's, it's like the others look the others look about the same as like Geralt Henry Cavill. Vicious is like a hundred times worse than all of it. It's crazy. It's fucking nuts. It kicks you out of your enjoyment of watching that intro for you to go oh shit who is that loser it's the primary antagonist like i'm just i'm I'm wondering if like thin normal long hair would like would you just have to change it to another hairstyle completely Peter like Orlando you know bloom pulled it off yeah yeah, Leggy did the Leggy. The the, the number he did. one no, thing he did. is the That's guy's true. gotta be super pretty. Mm-hmm. Legolas is a good counterpoint to like creating a live action fucking bishy bish. Yeah. Hmm. Orlando Bloom could have been Sephiroth. Uh, but then, but could you do the same? You can't do the dumb front hair thing though. The uh, the. Like, you couldn't do the same hairstyle in, in real hey, life man. with that, though. Hey, that would Agent, look terrible. If, if Agent Smith could get by with his little hair tassels. <laughs> I still remember the uh, day you just started screaming in laughter because you had had the mental thought of Elrond's little hair tassels just being stapled to Agent Smith in the Matrix. <laughs> and you were losing your fucking mind. That was like 15 years ago. I still think about it from time to time. You know what it is? Here's the thing, right? Um, so, uh, John Cho is going for the most spike-like hair he can have using his own hair. Mm-hmm. He's puffing it up, and and it's it's wild and, and unkempt, but it's still his hair. It's not a spike afro, right? Mm-hmm. So, by that kind of token you're looking at it going like okay well we can make this work as long as um the attempt is still using his own hair and making it kind of work but it's not 100 percent the same vicious it feels like they tried to make it too accurate you know uh, um anyway Anyway. Well, because they want they want the shot of him looking down and the hair going past his exactly. Eye line. Yes, and and the you no know, the the ballad of fallen angels, right? The knife to the yeah. sword and the the the, the knife. To, sorry, the sword to the gun, and then you know you already see him falling out the window, so you know what that's going to be. Um, you know, anyway, we I think we I think that was Julia. 
in the in the intro as well? It was Julia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So. <sighs> All right. Uh, so you had that. Moving along real quick. The, the uh, rebooting. Uh, Quantic Dream lost one of its libel cases and uh, won the other one because Le Monde would not uh, cite their sources to the court. Great. So they would have lost that one too, but Le Monde was protecting the employees that, that snitched on Quantic Dream. Um, so we got... Oh yeah, um, this is, I mean, this is probably more, you can probably chime in here. They're rebooting Babylon 5. I don't care. Don't know anything about Babylon 5. You would think I would. Don't know. Really? I have no faith in this, however. I thought you were a Babylon 5 guy. Zero episode scene. Damn, okay. So just Battlestar Galactica. All I know is that people used to compare it back to Deep Space Nine back in the day. Yeah, I guess between between BSG and, and Star Trek, I, I thought that w might have just landed in your wheelhouse. But all right, fair enough. It probably has, but I've just never seen it. Okay. Um, CW is doing it, so get ready for your fucking Dawson's oh, Creek Riverdale trash. energy. Oh, that's yeah, gonna like, be garbage. Like oh, the man. CW stuff is just, it's turned Dawson's Creek into a genre. And just, it's unbelievable. Like, the CWification of, like, superheroes and Archie and Sabrina and all this shit is wild. It's... <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, all right. There's that. Uh, there's a trailer for Sandman. Which is a good-ass comic. Oh, it is a good-ass comic? Okay. Fucking amazing comic. Um... I will have to see, you know, if like the trailer seems like it could be cool, but that is a high, high bar to 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 match if you're going for the fucking the Sandman comic. It's 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 great shit. Um, classic. Is I always say the name wrong. Series, a Netflix series. Okay. And uh, I always say the name wrong, so. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll option select it, but uh, Neil Gaiman slash Gaiman. You know, it's uh, it's it's a fucking just amazing example of him writing comics. Like, whoa, super good shit. Um, trailer for that's out. We'll see. Uh, and then we also got to take a, a peek. Actually, no. Do you remember in 2014 when uh, the Joe Schuster estate tried to sue DC for yes. the rights to Superman? I do. Well, now Marvel is having the exact same thing for the rights to Avengers, Spider-Man, Iron Man, S Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Falcon, Thor, like all, all right, of so it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly through this as fast as I possibly can. I was arguing with people about this over the weekend. It's wild. The, this is a court case that Disney should lose by default because they have been pushing the use of copyright and all this shit and stealing rights away from creators. But Marvel in, in particular has stolen characters away from creators for decades and decades and decades. I think it started with Mickey Mouse as the extending the hundred year um, uh, rule. Yeah. Uh, but the absolute embarrassment of some people looking at this, of uh, the, for example, the Ditko estate is trying to kill Spider-Man. They're going to take Spider-Man away and make it so that there's no Spider-Man things anymore. And it's like, okay, one, even if that was the case, the family's individual rights to their dad or grandpa's creation that was uh, probably taken from him by extra legal means is more important than the enjoyment of your video games or your comics. And two, that's not what it means at all. It just means that Disney or Marvel or whoever, what subsidiary, will have to pay the licensing fee for the most popular character that has ever existed that's made them 100 shit zillion dollars. So the they way specify they pay licensing fees to everything that they don't completely own.
So they specify in the in the in the report that um, it is uh, it's not for an exclusivity of ownership. It's for a shared ownership. Yeah, so it's like the it's like people hating on this because like, well, no, this, the Disney has to keep it so that my my toys and my movies. It's like no, it's you're just arguing that the family of somebody who created the most popular character ever or some of the most popular characters ever don't get their legitimate fair share as part of their estate because Disney makes a movie that you like or Marvel makes comics that you like. It's absurd. It's one of the things that we've come back to on this show like time and again it's like movies are great books are great video games are great they're entertainment products they don't supersede people's well-being lives or rights so the um the the thing with yeah so one as you mentioned disney has started and pushed forward that hundred year rule on things becoming um um uh, public property basically after the that point with mickey mouse and they keep extending that i do know uh again it happened with superman and uh they fucking lost like dc won and and stomped yeah, that out so people are uh expecting this to go in a very similar fashion oh yeah um, they're gonna lose super hard but uh, what this does bring up is the story of the Marvel method, which has been discussed uh, a couple times in the past when it it's comes a to... great way to steal characters from everyone who works for you. The way characters are created, and it used to be created back in the day, where it would just be like, as they're describing it, a series of loose discussions with the artists about like, what if this guy had this, or what if someone had that? And then more or less the lion's share is then done by you know, um, the artist at that point to create and flesh out and design the character or, or like the writer or so, but there would be a, a initial spark kind of quick conversation that um, allows Marvel to then uh, be like, hey, no, so we own this completely because that initial st sentence that you fleshed out came from us, you know? Yep. Um, yeah, uh, probably, yeah, probably going to get stomped out, but it is definitely crazier and higher stakes than the DC one was because this is everything uh, important at Marvel like post MCU so this type of thing happening now um, is what how many billions like yeah they didn't even get a full one estimate on zillion. it but just say one shit yeah. zillion dollars um, and according to the usual termination pro provisions of copyright law they would have to give up the rights as of June 2023 unless they're able to extend them with the courts in some particular oh, way. Oh, somehow I think they'll manage. We'll somehow. see. Somehow. We'll see. It is interesting, Literally though, that... Literally everything that you care about to most degrees should be in public domain already. It public is, it domain is, what used to be automatic after 30 years. It's interesting that the uh, this is happening um, like now considering what imagine what this lawsuit would have been like if this was pre MCU, you know, if this was back when like I would have been if, the same. But but the t no the size scale and like volume of the money involved, you, you know what I mean? Oh, it would, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a little different. Yeah, Avengers was not the biggest Marvel property, you know, back before these movies started. Like, it would have been a very different uh, case. Uh, but it just so happens that the, the 2023 is the year that this is supposed, supposed to expire. So, anyway, um, let's take some letters and get the fuck out of here. Let's uh, take one letters. Yes, one letters. If you want to send that letter in, send it to castlesuperbeastmail at gmail.com. And this will be the one letters we'll be reading for this week. Okay. Uh, this one comes to us from Richard, who says, Dear Battle Booper Beast, played Good. through Mass Effect LE recently. Uh, listen to the audiobooks of the three canon novels written by Drew Carpatian. Or Carpatian, oh. excuse me. Because fuck my life, and I can resoundingly anti-recommend these books for even the hardcore fans of the series. They're dull as, du as dusty dishwater. I finished the third novel, all caps underlined, Retribution, in red. 
I thought I would share more of the continued embarrassment of that that is piss stream Sam. So, the continuing explosive expletive adventures of Kai Pussy Lang. He's described as a nasty, sick cyborg ninja. Um, because I guess they hadn't worked on his character design yet, but he's still told and presented in the narrative as the most cool badass trained in every form of combat, best of the best of the best of the best, fearing for his fucking life like a Mexican police officer, etc. Kai is principal character, so we get to see the world through his perspective. Of course, this deep and respected character can be concisely summarized in every scene as always angry for no reason, love murder, is racist, no really, is really racist, like to the point yeah. where he's disgusted yeah. by the presence of any aliens in negotiations. Uh, yeah. With Arya, the elusive man has to write him a script because he knows Kai will fuck it up. Just like ME3, no matter how much they tell you he's cool, he still fucks up and constantly only survives through sheer luck. First thing we see him do is half botch a kidnapping because he didn't check if anyone else was in the apartment, despite oh the narrator God, telling like us. The first thing! He's the most patient and skilled assassin ever. After this, Kai eminently stabs and kills an unconscious woman, or a sorry whore, as he would say. This one is one of the few fights he'll win in the story. And perhaps the most agonizingly pathetic part, Lang is captured by Anderson, held at gunpoint, and there's also a severely injured kid, the same kid Kai tricked into helping him. Yes, he literally hides behind children in this story. And Anderson tells Kai to, stop the, to help to stop the bleeding. Um... Kai smugly, of course, says Anderson will have to let him go, and he helps the dying if he wants to help the dying kid. And Anderson just shoots Kai in the leg and goes to help the kid. So one of the last things we see of Kai is him describing is him pathetically crawling uh, on his belly in immense pain to slowly escape after fucking up and being captured for the second time. So anyway, in the audio book, the guy who reads it gives him the whiniest voice possible. Dude. So. When he says in things Mass like, this badass is on your side, it's a squeaky Simpsons team. In Mass Effect 3, Anderson references that event, but references it like, I shot the guy in the legs and that still didn't even stop him. Like, it's played for badass points. <laughs> P.S. Double icing on the cake. According to the Mass Effect wiki, Lang is Chinese for cold, or in this case, isolated and merciless. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> Good shit. Kai Lang fucking sucks. Good shit. Kai Pussy Lang rides on. <laughs>